Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I wanna to walk you through another client requirement that I got recently on some of the reports that I was building, where, as you can see in front of you here, they specifically had a matrix table built out where they had current and prior year at the measure level. Now with conditional formatting turned on, I have these colored differently because the conditional formatting is applied specifically to all of the current year values across all of these subtotal values in all of the gray and separately the prior year in the blue is also compared against each other. But what they wanted specifically is the ability to actually show this information via the date of our conditional formatting, but have a single scale universally between their two current and prior year values. So that's what we're gonna actually do and walk through a bit of clever modeling to get this to meet this client requirement. Let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So the common scenario that we have in front of us is where you would have some type of DAX calculation for current year sales and prior year sales that in this case simply does something where it uses the calculate function, gets the prior year. However, because we have two measures, any conditional formatting applied to them only applies to each one at a time under the cell elements section for each one of these. Now, again, the client requirement is they wanted to be able to have this, but have all of these values compare against each other with conditional formatting. So if I come down to this other tab here, it's going to look a little different, but with the same numbers. Notice now that I have a single color for all of my conditional formatting. So both my current and my prior year's values compare with each other, which lets me easily identify the largest ones. So that's helping me actually see universally between either of my years under any particular month for January, February, current and prior, and so on, where's my biggest or smallest values via an indicator from either data bars or font uh, formatting icons, whatever have you. If I select the visual, I actually only have one value in here for sales and notice that I have a CYPY flag on my columns section. So what I did is I built a DAX calculated table that actually let me accomplish this and it's connected to my calendar table. Coming over to the model view, what I have here is a table that is connected specially to my calendar table over here and that is going via a special key to the month and year column back down to this. So it's a special custom hybrid table that actually combines the data as needed. So I'll walk you through the measure in a second, but first let's come over to the table view and take a look at that table. So if I go to my CYPY, I'm gonna hide the formula until we take a look at this, but I have two sets of rows in here. So for any one of these, I have two flags of current year and prior year, and I also have a month and year column. If I was to filter just to January 2020 as an example. This label of January 2020 has a current and prior year and it has a key for the prior year month and year and the current year month and year. And this is the key right here that I actually go and connect to my dim calendar table with. So each single value of month year technically as a label has two keys to get the data from both current and prior. The relationships are handling the work. So clearing this out, and now taking a look at my formula, I basically did a union and created, in this case, a union between two tables where I grabbed the month and year column here. I added a flag of current and prior year. And for the key itself, I'm just getting the month and year. So January, 2020 equals January, 2020 in this case. But now I union that with the same label of the month and year. This is now getting get labeled as the prior year on that CYPY flag and the key is now gonna take this and parse it out. So it's getting the previous year here, 2019 instead of 2020, and then the same month. And I just put a one in here just because it's always gonna be the first of the month when I do a month in year column. But otherwise, that's essentially what's being brought into here. So let me format this just a little bit. There we go. So that's how we're able to get between those as I am bringing these in. So there's my January 2020 to 19 for the prior year. January 2020 to January 2020 for the current year, but because this many to many relationship has been created between these two, and I'm ensuring that it's going single directional whenever possible, just to avoid an actual bi-directional relationship because that's not needed, this becomes my table that I can then, in a visual, I can get those two columns from that special table, put the month and year special label on here, and then that break up below that, via the relationship to the dim calendar table will then fetch those two corresponding current and prior values. 
Again, this was a client scenario very specific for the fact that they wanted a combined conditional formatting in a detailed table like this so they could see the outliers and the mins and the maxes and everything else uh, when it came to that. So generally speaking, I love getting these. That's why I like to continue to develop because I get a lot of scenarios where I can build through these. But I found it was an interesting solution. Leveraging a table and relationships go a long way in solving this because the measure is simple. It's not doing anything fancy. It is just the sum of sales amount in here. It's through special table and relationships and that connection that gets the data to break out like this and lets it be combined under a single conditional format for one cell element. So really great way to do this. But otherwise, I'd be curious to see your thoughts, comments on this. Um, if you have any other suggestions for this as well, you could technically have done this at the quarter year level and a few others, but um, I did this at the month and year because that was what was in there. So feel free to drop some comments in uh, into the notes and comment section down below. Otherwise, check out some of my related content here in the upper left. As always, liking, commenting, sharing, just letting people know about these videos will continue to help my channel grow and get viewership and subscribers. So hopefully you get a chance to do that. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video.